welcome to my channel. Um, this is my first ever YouTube video. I have been wanting to make video content for a while and I just finished my entry into the sketchbook project so I thought that making a sketchbook tour would be a good place to start. I just want to start off by giving a bit of context and explaining a bit about the sketchbook project for anyone that doesn't already know um, or is interested in learning a bit more about it. Um, but if you want to just skip ahead to the actual sketchbook tour, that's fine. I'll put the timestamp for that in the description. So the sketchbook project is a crowdsourced collection of sketchbooks from people from all around the world. They currently have, I think, around 40,000 of these sketchbooks. Um, their storefront is Brooklyn Art Library in the US. Um, where all these books are kept and you can actually go there to visit and have a look at them in person. Um, and another thing is that anyone is welcome to participate, so I think that is also really cool. All the sketchbooks are divided into different volumes depending on when you got yours. So for example, I got mine in March 2019, so it will be part of volume 15. Each volume actually goes on tour to different cities in the US in little pop-up exhibitions. Um, so you are given a due date to return by if you want your book to go on tour. However, they do still accept all of the sketchbooks returned after the due date. Um, so mine was due for tour in January this year, but obviously um, it's September now <laughs> and I only just finished it, but that is just life, I guess. Lastly, I just want to say that this video is not in any way sponsored by the Sketchbook Project. They are actually a non-profit organisation that is 100% funded by participation. I just think it's a really cool initiative and just wanted to share my contribution to the project since I put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and I'm honestly pretty pleased with the end product and it's something I'm proud to have made, even if it took me well over a year to finish. <laughs> So first off, for the sake of consistency, everyone gets given this same 5 by 7 inch blank sketchbook. Uh, basically the only rule is that you have to use this sketchbook and it has to remain the same size. You are allowed to completely rebind it with a different kind of paper if you want to, as long as it stays within those dimensions and isn't any thicker than 1 inch when it's closed. I personally didn't rebind my book, but I did do a lot of mixed media collage work, so I ended up sticking in a lot of different paper types anyway. So the sketchbook is 100% recycled, um, and the paper is quite a thin, low text weight. I'm not sure of the exact details, um, but it has 16 pages or 32 back to front. You're also given a list of themes or prompts that you can choose from to base your sketchbook on, but this is just supposed to be a starting point and not a restriction. So I didn't explicitly choose any of the prompts provided personally, but my book did end up having some kind of narrative theme. Um, and that was sort of like art journaling, my mental health journey over the past few years of my life. So there are some sad girl moments in here, but you know, it's not that deep. So the first spread was a bit of a light-hearted one. I didn't really know at this point where I was going to take this book, but I was just really excited to start. Um, and I have down the bottom here, maybe this will make me happy. That's kind of how I was feeling at the time um, about taking on the project. The text is sort of something that I continued to put on every page, just so it's a little less ambiguous. Um, and this is where I established this character that is supposed to be myself. So especially for drawings like this, I use a few different reference images from Pinterest or whatever. Um, and then I change the hair and outfit to look more like me. So for this one, I was just using pen. Um, there's some watercolor pencil in the background, a little bit of Copic marker here and there. I was kind of just winging it. Um, but these collage bits, you will see a lot of in here. They're just torn out of this old nature photography book that I have from like the 90s called Beautiful Australia. Um, I use it for collages very often so you'll definitely see a lot of these bits in here. 
This one you might recognize if you follow me on Instagram, I'm pretty sure I posted it. Um, it just started off as just the squiggly pattern in the background and then I came back later to add more after I'd established more of a solid theme because it felt a bit random on its own. Um, this is a drawing I did in another sketchbook but I photocopied it and stuck it in here um, because I didn't want to get rid of the background but I wanted to add something else. This is just pen on some yellow paper um, and I've gone and added some colours with Copic markers. This is another drawing that I did earlier outside the sketchbook that I decided to stick in. It's just pen and white pencil um, on a watercolour background. The reference is Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks and I thought it would be funny to put the caption drink water. Um, and on the other side here is just a little text chat bubble saying feel better. Sort of just referring to how almost aggressively positive people can feel when you're not in a good place. Again, this was another sketch that I did in a different notepad and I tore it out. I don't really know if I like this page, I kind of feel like it's a little bit cliche, but whatever. Um, I basically just drew this selfie in my bedroom when it was really messy <laughs> and the text says worried that maybe I'd waste the best years of my life being sad all the time. Um, this is probably the most emo page in here. Um, this page was a very quick one. I won't say filler, but there was definitely minimal effort behind it. So I've got some more cutouts from the Nature Photography book. And this here, I actually used what was a test on a scrap piece of paper for a laser cut woodblock print from my printmaking class at uni last year. For some reason, I always hoard test print scraps and stuff like this because I like to do a lot of recycling for things like this, as you can see. Um, and the words here say thought that I knew how to feel. From this point in the sketchbook, the text starts to actually be a bit more planned and that the pages start to become more relevant and flow on from each other and at first this wasn't intentional but I noticed from here in the next page that I actually had a little rhyming scheme happening so then I sort of tried to consciously continue it from there. This, I think, is probably one of the most vulnerable pages in this book. It's also one of my favourite. This is the first time you'll actually see a detailed portrait of myself, um, or three. This was also the first time in this book where I really went in on the experimentation with materials. For ages, I'd just drawn the first self-portrait on the left and I didn't know where to go from there. Um, then one day I just came back to it and decided to just let loose. So the text says how will I know when it's real? Um, here I was referring to those feelings of derealization and disassociation. So obviously the drawings are graphite. Um, for the background colour I actually used a tinted graphite pencil. I'd never used them before but they're pretty interesting and nice for just a subtle hint of colour. Um, then for all these collage scraps I put in some brown toned paper. Um, some tissue paper over here. I'm not sure if you can see but this was the first time I thought to put tissue paper in. Um, and I really liked the effect how when you glue it in you can still see through it. So I drew this little sprig of lavender on some tissue paper and then I glued it in over my face um, and I just put these bits of masking tape there to make it look like it's taped in. Now also these are actually old photos from when I was making a scrapbook or photo album ages ago um, and my printer was running out of ink and a bunch of these photos came out really poorly with weird colours. Um, I don't know why I kept them but I thought that they looked kind of cool. Um, and I might use them for something like this one day. Um, and I did, so here, here we are. <laughs> I made this page in January when the bushfires were really bad. This 
might seem like a dramatic depiction, but for anyone who isn't from Australia or who doesn't live in an area that was badly affected, um, this is a picture from my parents' backyard for comparison. It says most of us are swallowing fear. Um, this page was less focused on the internal mental health struggle and I guess more about this general sense of hopelessness and anxiety I think everyone is experiencing in 2020. For this page I was thinking about the stigma associated with opening up and speaking about mental health issues and how we often tend to restrict those to be internalised problems. It says we don't talk about that here and I've drawn another self-portrait where I was using this sheer curtain to pull over my face for the reference photo and I did draw the material but then I actually used tissue paper glued in, I'm not sure if you can see that but I wanted to give it a bit of a tactile quality. Um, so this is just graphite, um, again these are tinted graphite pencils for the plants. Uh, there is a bit of pastel pencil in the background and I've just used a random scrap piece of brown paper for that one. If you follow me on Instagram, you might recognize this hand painting. Um, I had the idea for this in my head for so long and I'm still not 100% sure if I executed it how I would have liked to. Um, it didn't really end up looking how it did in my head, but it's alright. <laughs> um, this is actually an oil painting I did on canvas paper, and my first thoughts about using tissue paper was just so that the page wouldn't stick together if I glued tissue paper over the top of it. Um, but then I had the idea to draw this second hand on the tissue paper to give it this like see-through ghostly effect. Um, these here are just watercolour scraps that I've glued in and I've just put masking tape here to give it some symmetry um, and the words just say what will it take to let someone in. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. This one was a lot of fun. It was one of those pages I just didn't really have a plan for but I ended up being one of my favourites. I started with this snake drawing on the right and was just that for a long while and I was feeling pretty stuck. I kind of felt like the, it was out of place um, and I didn't really know what else to do with it. And I also really wanted to draw a rabbit and thought, oh, that would actually be quite a cool contrast. Um, the message from this one isn't too explicit or closely related to the theme, but I don't really mind that. This is another one where I used a reference photo of someone else and changed it to look like me. I really liked the pose and felt like I could relate to that just lying on the floor. Um, the background is another painted scrap paper, it's actually screen ink from when I was making some shirts. The drawing is in pen um, and these lines are in pastel pencil and there is some Copic marker but it didn't really show up. This was by far the most satisfying one to make. I'm not sure why, but the composition and balance here just brings me a lot of joy. Um, the text is quite small here, but it says none of it was in my control. Um, I painted this figure in watercolour specifically for this spread, but the rest of the watercolour bits are just more old scraps that I glued in. Um, I have a lot of those. <laughs> This is more from the Nature Photography book, um, and yes, this here is a real dried piece of lavender. I've just used tape here, so it is completely sealed in. I was beginning to run out of ideas for whole spread compositions by this point, so I just started freestyling it a bit over here which I guess is kind of the point of a sketchbook. But on this page I've used Copic marker, um, a scrappy piece of paint test paper that I just thought was a bit texturally interesting. Um, I've drawn my own eyes here with a blue pencil. 
Um, this pattern thing happening over here was actually a snippet of some drawing experiments I did for a uni assignment that I've just pasted in. It's just charcoal and pencil over the top and then I've copied the pattern over here in pen. Still not really sure how I feel about this page but I think it's nice. The process was a little bit all over the place. I tried a few different things that didn't really work out and I started again like three times but we got there. So I drew this from a photo of my friend and I that another friend took on her balcony. And once I'd drawn us, I had this idea to print the photo out on paper at the same scale that I'd drawn it and paste it in the background. I'm not really sure what I was going for, but here is a piece of the printed photo that I've just gone over it with really thin gesso wash and then outlined the little shapes with pen. So it looks kind of cartoonish. And here is more photography book over here. More snippets of those failed uh, printer ink photos I mentioned before. I've added another layer with tissue paper, uh, similar to the hands where I've got this ghosty outline of myself offset a little bit. The text says, I hardly noticed the change. I guess here I'm kind of just talking about how sometimes you don't even realize you're getting better and you'll just find yourself one day feeling okay and good and you're like, hey, when did this happen? And that brings us to the very last page. I sat on this one for so long, I just didn't know how to finish it, like this whole thing, uh, where to leave it, because somewhere along the way I had started telling the story almost and I was worried about the last page being underwhelming or something. But I thought about it for long enough and what to say and I think I'm happy with this being the end because there's been a whole range of emotions through this book, but I think this is a positive one. So I've got this big watercolour moon-like circle, um, and this cutout from the Australian Nature book I held on to for so long, waiting for the right page to use it in, because I think it's just really pretty and I loved the mood that it has. Um, I thought it was very special. I've drawn some cute plants reaching up towards the moon, and the text that actually begins under this tissue paper with this line, so you can only very faintly see. Uh, this is loose, so you can lift it up to read. It says, it hurts, yet I'm alive to feel it, and that I'm sure is brave. This whole thing is really about growth and letting yourself just feel things and move through them and for me this whole process of making this kind of art has really helped me move through a lot of things by just expressing them in this way. So that's the note I wanted to finish this little journey on. Even though things are still painful sometimes because healing isn't linear, the fact that you and I are still here and alive to feel these things at all. I think is something to be celebrated. And that is the end of my sketchbook tour. I am so stoked to be a part of this project um, and to have something that's so personal to be delivered in such an intimate medium as a handheld sketchbook. I think there's just something really wholesome about that. Uh, so I hope I'm able to connect with some people through this. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, um, I hope you found this interesting and somewhat entertaining. As I mentioned earlier, this is actually my very first YouTube video, so if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, drop a comment, maybe let me know what kind of content you might like to see from me in the future, uh, subscribe if you want, um, I am of course on Instagram and all of that stuff and I also have a Patreon channel so if you're interested in checking out any of those I will leave links in the description. And that's it. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!